Hello, moon babies. How are you? It's Molly. Thank you so much for being here. And if you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome. And if you're an old friend, welcome back. Today, our location is a little bit different. We are in my studio today, and I wanted to share a grimoire video with you today because it's been a second since we've done a little bit of grimoire talk here on YouTube. Specifically, I wanted to share with you three mistakes, mistakes I made with my grimoire when I started my art magic journey. And I'm hoping that by sharing these with you, you will feel more empowered and more confident in your art magic and your mystical bookkeeping. So without further ado, let's talk about three mistakes I made with my grimoire and what I do instead. Mistake number one. I took my book, my grimoire, way too seriously. <laughs> I tended to my grimoire like I was a surgeon saving lives, right? This was very serious business and only the best rituals, the most elaborate drawings, the most perfect precise notes would earn a space in the pages of my grimoire. I took it so seriously with such discipline that I actually stopped working in it for long stretches of time altogether. I started to get afraid of my own book. And when that happens, boredom and resentment set in, and the fun is officially sucked out. So what do I do now? I play. I play. I bring humor, adventure, vulnerability, fun to my book. And now we get to hang out much more regularly. And in opening up this sense of humor and play and adventure, I also feel free enough to work in multiple books at once. I don't feel like I'm cheating <laughs> on my grimoire if I want to play in another book or another journal. All of our relationships in life grow stale when we stop playing together, including our relationship with our art, our magical life, and our magical record keeping. So treat your grimoire like a friend and it will be a friend to you. I also would like to make a point here that with the proliferation of art content on the internet and being able to see behind the scenes of people's processes, there's a lot of pressure to be creating constantly and be creating at the top of your game or at the very edge of your creativity all the time. And I want to assure you, moon babies, that the work that you see, like the work in the video you're watching right now, did not occur <laughs> in an hour of free time. It takes days, weeks, and sometimes even months for a creator to show you something that flies by in a few minutes. So remember to be kind to yourselves, set reasonable expectations for yourself. You are a witch, not a machine. Art does not get churned out. It is mulled upon and digested and comes about in a much more organic way. So. Be good to yourself, moon baby, all right? Mistake number two. Using my grimoire as a measuring stick for my witchiness. My thoughts were, real witches perform ritual all the time. Real witches have piles of books with records of supernatural encounters and detailed dreams, and real magicians have painstakingly organized books, not this crunchy shamble of rainbow pages full of cartoon mercats. <laughs> real grimoires, I thought, are reference books, and that if I were a real witch, I wouldn't feel stuck or have unspiritual or messy feelings, and they certainly wouldn't appear 
in my grimoire. <laughs> I overindulged and took in way too many other voices about what my witchery should look like, what my art should look like, what my creativity should look like, and I used those things to beat myself up. There is no right way to witch. No right way to art, and no right way to art witch, and no real or true way to keep a grimoire either. So what do I do now? I work in the pages of my grimoire when I want to celebrate my magic. I work in my books when I want to document memories, when I make personal discoveries, whether those memories are discoveries present as being stereotypically witchy or magical or not. And this is big creative freedom. Mistake number three. My grimoire needed to look and feel old to feel legitimate. I think this urge for a giant, ancient, dusty book initially came from play and mimicry and a strong interest in book arts and art history, which are all great. Or perhaps it was the belief that the old ways are always better. Maybe it was using the illusion of age to lend authenticity or a legitimacy to what I was doing because I doubted my own abilities. My grimoire was not a hand-bound museum piece or a film prop, which really gets the book nerd in me absolutely drooling. But my book isn't a relic. It's a working document. And it's a 25-cent chapbook that I picked up from a thrift shop. (laughs) And the part of me that desperately wanted to do it right and be legitimate kept trying to force my grimoire to be something she wasn't. So what do I do now? Now I acknowledge that my grimoire and grimoires are a living, evolving document that mirrors who I am as a person, as a creatrix, as a witch. Instead of trying to shoehorn myself into a style that does not reflect my life experience, I decided to treat my book more like a familiar. Part scrapbook, part art journal, part pet, part playground, part magical object, a being with their own personality, quirks, and stories. When I let go of the antiquity requirement, an affection for what I could do and create started to blossom in a quiet way and then in much less quiet ways. I assure you, moon babies, that life got super interesting once I started doing art and magic my way. And I promise you, moon baby, yours will too. So relax, play, be curious, go forth, fill your grimoire or grimoires, and make all the things I know you can do it. I hope that these suggestions were fun and helpful for you as you go forth and create magic in your own books, in your own life and in your own world. If you're interested in learning more about anything that you saw in this video, any of the particular spreads, you can check out the full length tutorials on Patreon. And at this point, I would like to give a massive heart wave shout out, yay, to all of my incredible, generous patrons. Thank you so much for making this work and this channel possible, so thank you. And if you would like to stay in tune and up to date with what's going on in the art magic universe, I would invite you to play along with Moon Baby Mail. You can sign up for the mailing list to get arts, meditations, 
first peeks at videos, and I'll let you know when there are courses available. And if you're watching this video at the time of publishing, we have a live round of Rock Your Grimoire coming up in just a few days. Rock Your Grimoire is a 14-day art magic blitz to create the mixed media grimoire of your dreams. <laughs> So if you feel like going back to Artwood School and partying hard in your book, please come play along. We have a lot of fun. And I want to thank you so much for watching, for being here, for being you. And until we speak again, Moonfolk, which I promise will be very soon, witch on, witch boldly. And be well, my friends. Bye for now. Mwah.